Shalom everyone. Welcome to our online service again. It's so great to see you with us. And right now, we are going to celebrate the limitless love of God who is with us now and will always be with us. Now, these are unprecedented times filled with uncertainty and fear and sometimes even changing how church gathers together. But we will persevere because the church is not a building. It is not brick or mortar. It is the body of Christ. It is all of us honouring God no matter our circumstance. Any place, any time, any day. We are still the church. So new norms but same God. He is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. So friends, get ready to be blessed by Him. Faith, hope, love. These three are of the highest calling, but these three are risky. Faith is risky. My mind demands that things be explained, demands that I reason, demands that I quantify. Like Doubting Thomas, I want to touch or I struggle to believe. Have I seen God? No, I haven't. Yet here I am, remaining, persisting to place God at the center of my life. Though my eye has not seen Him and my ear has not heard Him, I persist. Faith, it's a risk. Hope, like faith, is risky. There may be grief, rejection, tragedy, suffering before today is over. I have no idea what the next hour holds for me. Yet here I am, remaining, full of wonder, optimistic, persisting to believe God will do what He promised in His Word, belief that His will shall be accomplished in my life and in this world that is so full of tragedy. Hope. It's a risk. And like faith and hope, love is risky. I watch my son skateboard. Honestly, he's terrible at it. He's uncoordinated, he's clumsy, he falls, he gets hurt all the time, but he keeps at it. And love for me is like that. I'm uncoordinated, I'm clumsy, I fall, I hurt and I get hurt. In fact, I'm far better at impatience. I'm truly gifted at keeping records of wrongs. I make a mess of my relationships. Yet here I am, remaining, like my son, persisting, Daily attempting to do that which I do very clumsily. Daring to believe that though I may fail at love, love never fails. Faith, hope, love. These three are of the highest calling. These three are risky. Yet these three remain. Hey Church! Welcome to Church of Praise. Welcome to our service. Welcome to those of you tuning in online. Okay, I'm glad to see you in the house of God. Are we all? Yes? Yeah. All right. Have a look at, look at what's happening on stage. Can you believe it's December already? Christmas is coming and the end of this year, 2020, is almost here. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's uh, been a year of quite a lot of bad news, yeah? But you know what? Because you're here today, because you're here tuning online, I have good news for you. Okay, can we rise to our feet first? Okay, now, like I said, I have good news for you. That's all I want you to do. Turn to your neighbor and shout, I have good news for you. I have good news for you. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. The Savior is born. The Savior is born. Yes, amen. Yes, Christmas is all about the good news of the birth of our Lord and Saviour. So let's sing the good news today. Let's raise our hands today.
of the love of God that our Lord Jesus Christ came down on earth as a man to be with us, to live for us, to die for us. And so, Lord, so now let's all of us please think, think on His love. Let's think on His love. Sing of His love and speak of His love to the people around us.
Numbers 6, verse 24. It says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace.
in your word, Lord. We claim them, we claim them with our hands, we claim them with our hearts. Lord, we love you, Lord. We're so grateful for everything you've bestowed on us, Lord, for all the blessings you've rained down on us, Lord. Lord, I just pray that I just thank you for always being with us all through this year, all through next year, and and the next, and the next, down to our children, and their children, and their children, all generations downwards. Lord, you are with us, Lord. You are with us. You are for us, Lord. I just want to thank you for being so faithful, for being so loving, Lord, even though we don't deserve it, Lord. Lord, that you are with us, Lord. So right now, Lord, please help us to always remember you, to walk with you closely, Lord, to spend time with you, Lord, in fellowship with you. So right now, Lord, as we move on with the rest of the service, I pray that you please anoint our anoint our pastor, Lord, our pastor Mike, as even as he brings your word, to brings brings us your word, Lord, that whatever what what words come from this mouth will never return void, Lord. So and Lord also pray for the pray that you bless the time of communion later. And leave the rest of us service in your hands, Lord. But right now, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Okay, we have Jess, Sister Jasmine with announcements. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sister Diana and team for leading us into a great time of worship. Woo! <laughs> Okay, hello Church of Praise. Hello. Okay. I'm Jasmine. I'll be making the announcements today. So whether you are in a physical service right now or you are joining us through online platform, we want uh, we would like to welcome you. Hope you will be greatly blessed by our service today. And if this is your first time joining us online, do type I'm new in the comment section on either Facebook or YouTube. So that we can acknowledge you And for our newcomers in the physical service right now When I read out your name Feel free to stand or wave right where you are So that we can identify you And give you our warmest welcome Alright So can we welcome Sister Catherine James Woo! Ah, she is there Welcome Sister Catherine Yeah Yeah yeah, usually if it is not COVID season, we will, you know, there will be a bunch of people going to surround you, yeah, with their warmest welcome. But now, yeah, so we're just saying hello. Right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, can I have the ushers to come forward, please? Let's pray for the tithes and offerings. All right. Okay, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us into the month of December, Lord, the very last month of the year. And this year is a very, very challenging year for some of us, but we thank you for proving your faithfulness and your goodness to us again and again, Lord. Thank you for all your provisions and thank you for being so real and tangible to us in every season of our lives, Lord. Lord, today let us come before you with a grateful and cheerful heart. May we give unto you with a willing heart, and may all these tithes and offerings be put into good use to spread your love and lift your name up high. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. All right. Our ushers will go from seat to seat to collect the offerings. And you can also give via Do It Now or Direct Bank Transfer if you prefer to do so. So uh, the details uh, are shown on the screen. 
So um, please don't forget to also include under the reference what the giving is for, whether it's tithes or for missions, etc. Alright. Okay, next. So for those of you who are joining us online, we'll be having Holy Communion today after the sermon. So do get your emblems ready and join us later. Right. Okay, so did you all notice all the beautiful Christmas decorations the moment you step into the church just yes, now? Yes? Yeah. So we'd like to take this opportunity to thank Michelle, Anthony and team. Woo! You know, to, to get all these things done. Right. And this is definitely a product of great teamwork, I would say. Right. And this is what happened when God's people put their God-given talent into good use. Amen. So we see all these beautiful products. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, okay, so all these Christmas decorations also reminded us that Christmas is coming. So we'll be having physical as well as online services on 25th December at 10 a.m. Alright, so you are welcome to join us and registration is required for physical service and will open uh, next weekend. Alright, so stay tuned and sign up later. Alright, okay. And next will be uh, worship team is recruiting. So please contact Brother Alan Lau to inquire how you may join the team. Team is specifically looking for drummers and electric guitarists. However, if you are gifted in other areas, feel, uh, feel free to contact Brother Ellen to arrange for an audition. Alright? So, if you have the talent, don't hide it. Alright? Don't be shy. Okay? It's all for the glory of God. Alright? Don't hide your talent. Yeah. Okay. Next. Okay. Sound group meetings are still on. Alright? So, if you haven't joined one, feel free to contact you know, any of our cell leaders to, to join one, right? And stay connected, okay? You are not alone, right? So if you, are, if you have any prayer requests, feel free to share with us as well, right? You can share your request uh, by QR code or text to this number 012-237-3952, okay? We would like to pray for you and pray along with you, right? Okay, sermon recap. Last week, Brother Danny Chen shared about when God leads us into trouble. Uh, it's very relevant, especially this year, right? So he mentioned about a few main points. Uh, he mentioned that sometimes when, uh, God leads us into uncomfortable situations. Uh, and these may be situations that only God can resolve. And God does this so that we may experience who He really is. And something that he mentioned I find it very important is if we want to experience God, we cannot afford to stay comfortable. You know, the more challenging the situation is, the more powerful the testimony will be. Amen. Okay, so if you have missed the sermon, feel free to go to YouTube, type Church of Praise, and you'll be able to watch it from there. Okay. All right. Uh, finally, let's put our hands together to welcome our senior pastor. Pastor Michael Yeo to the pulpit to share the word of God with us and his sermon title is Living for Christ in Uncertain Times. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. That's a well-scripted announcement. <laughs> yeah, our chat group just says she's still preparing the script just now. We are. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say with me, you are not alone. I mean, that's what Jasmine said just now and this was in the context of uh, cell groups, uh, but I'm saying and asking you to repeat it is in the context of Christmas. Christmas is about Christ coming to us. Christmas is about the Savior who is named Emmanuel, and we know Emmanuel means God with us. So, whatever situation that you are going through, uh, just remember God is with you. You are not alone facing what you are facing. Maybe physically you may feel alone, but God is with you. Christmas is a season where we remind ourselves that God is with us. So even as you look at all these uh, beautiful decorations and the trees, yes, uh, catch the Christmas uh, joyous mood 
but all, more important is to remember the reason why we are celebrating, the reason why we can celebrate. It's because we know God is with us and we are not alone. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today, I want to share a bit uh, on living for Christ in uncertain times. So obviously, two observations. We are definitely living in uncertain times. And uh, some people came up with all these uh, humorous quotes and, and, and cartoons and I find sometimes can be quite appropriate. And so there's this Mr. Bean. He, still, uh, he says, I still have not decided where to go for Easter, debating between the bedroom or the living room. So I guess it must be in the context of the MCO. Cannot go out, all right? Uh, the other one is this. It says, finally, COVID-19 is gone. Now, how do we get out? You know? <laughs> so many uncertainties eh, in many different ways. Uh, but more on a serious note, uh, it, 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 we are not certain about many things. And in fact, uh, for those uh, who are having mental issues and those caregivers, they are not very certain how this will, will play out, especially in the lives of those with mental uh, 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 sickness. And this article in the Strait Times explore about it, and they are quite concerned how this COVID-19 is impacting, uh, in fact, not just those who are mentally unwell, but even those who are normal in all circumstances. But because of the continuous pressure of trying to cope with the situation, some people have a hard time. And uh, some are also very concerned about the impact on those who need palliative care and, and, and people who, who may be suffering from cancer or life-threatening disease where they really need people to nurse them. But because of these new norms, and so it, it, it's quite difficult to do their job. So uh, these are some of the things, some of the concerns because of the uncertainty uh, that is behind everything. And so we are living in uncertain times. In fact, um, I, 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 I've never been so uncertain as a pastor uh, until this season, actually. Uh, honestly, I mean... We, we go to Bible school, we are not prepared to face a pandemic like COVID-19, you know, uh, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, nobody knew that the whole world can shut down because of a sickness. I think um, uh, just about a year ago, about this time, I said, don't worry, like, it's only in China, like, Wuhan, you won't reach here. Yeah? Wow. Well, by March, my story, my tone, everything changed already. My, my key, everything changed already. <laughs> so I realized, oh, it's that serious. So after, and so, uh, quite uncertain how all this will play out. And even up till now, after almost nine months, it's still, this uncertainty is still there. I was sharing with some people, I say, um, I, I feel like I'm a stockbroker. Every day looking at COVID-19 cases in Johor. Green, light, uh, green, orange, red, green, orange, red. They keep changing, they keep fluctuating, you know. And I have to know because I need to make decisions how we want to run the ministry. And say, I say, wow, oh, so many, every day, 24 hours, I'm on uncertainty. So now it's about 4.37. So by 6 plus, we'll hear uh, news, okay, how many in Malaysia. But there's only Malaysia. I, you will need uh, to wait until about 8 or 9. Uh, or 10, then you, you're updated in the state. Uh, what, then I'll know, okay, today is how many? And I'm observing, you know, like playing stock market like that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, with that kind of experience, I'm sure I'm not going to stock market at all because it's really not a very fun time. <laughs> Keep, so uncertain, you know, not made for that. So, we are living in uncertain times. I'm sure you have your own, own uncertainties as well today as you sit here in your own context. There are certain things you are uncertain, especially uh, aggravated by COVID-19. And we are not, but then again, we are not uh, just living through uncertain times. We are at the same time asked to live for Christ. And this is a calling from God. And in Colossians 3.17, everything you do or say should be done to obey 
Jesus your Lord. And this is in the context of any time, whatever situation that you are going through. It's not only just the good times, but even in the challenging times, even the uncertain times like that, even in, in a pandemic like this, going through a pandemic like this, everything we do or say should be done to obey Jesus our Lord. And... Uh, Deuteronomy 6.5, we, we know very clearly about this, that when we love the Lord, we love Him with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength. And that means it doesn't matter, even if this, uh, there's a pandemic, I'm still to love God with all of my heart, my soul, my strength. It just doesn't mean that uh, now we have COVID-19 pandemic, okay, we chop chop with God, you know. Okay, MCO, so... Uh, uh, God, I cannot go out, I cannot, I cannot be in connection with you, you know. Uh, so, it, does, it doesn't matter. We still, the same thing, the same calling, we are still to live for Christ, even in these uncertain times. So, uh, I, I remember so, seeing this uh, uh, T-shirt, uh, obviously a basketball lover. He says, basketball is life and the rest is just the details. And perhaps if I may change this quote, I will say for Christians, like you and me, Jesus is life. Say me, Jesus is life. Jesus is life and the rest is just the details. We need to understand that we need to be on the same platform today. And we need to remember, whatever the circumstances, Jesus is life. Jesus is, is life for us pre-COVID-19, during COVID-19 and post-COVID-19. Doesn't matter, Jesus is life. And the rest, the pandemic, is just details. And so this is of utmost importance. So the question is, how then can we live for Christ in uncertain times like this? And I'd like to take from Philippians 1, 19 to 26. And I chose this because Paul, we all know that Paul wrote this letter in prison and he was living in uncertain times. He was in an uncertain situation. He doesn't know he'll be sentenced to life, he'll be released, or he'll be probably executed. But yet at that same time when he writes this letter to encourage the churches, we understand where this, how this man of God is handling uncertainties in his life. And he wrote to them, a part of it was this, he says, For I know that through your prayers, maybe you read together, yeah, one, two, three. For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for your deliverance, uh, for my deliverance, sorry, for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. So I love this. Now, as always, even in this time of uncertainty, as always, as even when it was time of certainty, it's always that Christ will be exalted. And then he says, let's do it again. One, two, three, four. To me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. And if I'm to go on living in this body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. And convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. So how can we live for Christ in uncertain times and what we can get from this passage and learn from Paul? How did he live in uncertain times. How did he live for Christ in uncertain times? And we're going to learn at least three lessons that I pick up from here. And the first is that we need to continue to trust God. Say with me, trust God. We need to continue to trust God. Paul says, For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me means imprisonment, the imprisonment that has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Now, in that context, it's turned out for his sanctification, for his uh, uh, character building. That's what he was saying. 
So he, he is trusting that even a situation like this that has caused so much uncertainties to him, but yet at the same time in his heart, he is believing God that he will turn out for his deliverance. Any one of us here can say today that what the COVID-19 pandemic has happened to us, what has happened to us through the pandemic will turn out for our deliverance. Do we have that faith to believe in that? For Paul to live for Christ in uncertain times is to continue to trust God's plan and purpose for him. Paul may not have fully understood and we do not fully understand why this pandemic is allowed, why we have to go through such a situation. May not have fully understood why God allowed him to place in prison, but he did know that it will all work out towards his deliverance, his sanctification, his uh, character being built up through the situation. And, and it is of utmost importance that we be on the same page as him that in situations like what we are doing, going through now, we have to exercise the faith that all these that are happening to me and happening to us, though it's unpleasant most of the time, but yet we are going to believe that God is building all of us here to be more and more like Jesus. Can you hear amen from God's people? That is where He's heading. That is where God is leading us. Through every good times and bad times, God is building and molding us. We need to get that in our mind. We see this faith evident with many men of God, not just Paul, in Scripture when confronted with uncertainty and hard times. Of course, we have the greatest example of all, which is Jesus Christ at the Garden of Gethsemane at the prospect of going to the cross and being crucified and dying a very painful and horrifying death. Jesus says, if you are willing, take away this cup of suffering. Obviously, it wasn't something that he wants to go through if he can, but he says, do what you want, not what I want. Or in other versions, not my will, but yours be done. Trusting God to use everything in life for His plans and purposes. Even though it may be unpleasant and, and it doesn't, we don't really, really look forward to it. But just trusting, just trusting God. If it is your will, let your will be done. If this is the journey, this is the path that I'm to go through, I will embrace it because I believe that everything will work out for my deliverance, for my sanctification, for my character building. And another example I got to think of was, was uh, King David. Now, there was a time, a season in his life when, when King David's son was trying to overthrow him. And, 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 and this kind of uh, 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 things are happening uh, even during that time. And so his own son wanted to, to build an uh, 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 empire himself and, and plotted against the father. And King David was running away. And while he was running away, uh, he met one guy called Shimei. And Shimei is from the clan of Saul. And he, he really hated David. And when he saw David running, uh, in a way, I would say he was quite happy. He, and, and he took advantage of the situation. He knew that David was on the run. And he took rocks and everything. He was throwing at him and cursing him. And, and for, for what he did uh, to Saul, because he belongs to the same clan and tribe as Saul. And uh, uh, one of David's men wanted to kill him, actually. Uh, wanted to kill this guy for throwing stones at David. Uh, David's bodyguard, so to speak, Abishai, son of Jeruiah, said to the king, why should this dead dog, he was referring to Shimei, curse you, the king, let me go over and cut off his head. And then you look at how David answered. David answered, he said, this does not concern you, sons of Jeruiah. He stopped them from killing him. He said, if this man, if he, Shimei, is cursing me because the Lord told him to, who can question him? Maybe the Lord will see my misery and repay me with something good for Shimei curses today. So even in that situation, David was surrendering everything to God. He chose not to react to the situation. How many of us, when we are in difficulty, we don't respond but we react. We don't respond in faith but we react in fear. 
in anger. And so this, again, is another man who is willing to trust God and continue to trust God, not just in the good times, but in the bad times as well. Romans 8, 28 says, We know that in everything God works for the good of those who love Him. They are the people He called because that was His plan. And again, when we say about God works for the good, it does not mean necessarily that after your suffering, you're going to bless hundreds of times just like Job. Not necessarily financial blessing. But the context of this verse, when God works for the good, means God works for the building of your character and my character. Predestined to be like Him, more Christ-likeness in us. That is the thing that God is working in our lives. Through the season that He put us through, His main focus is to build your faith and my faith, that we come out stronger in our faith. You know, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. How many of you have watched this movie? Well, some may be thinking. I watch also. It's okay, so you can put up. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, Tolkien is, is, is a writer. He used stories like this. Actually, he's communicating the principles and the truth of the gospel in his time. Uh, he's a Christian, all right? Uh, and so, in, in, I remember in this, in, this, in this show, there was a point where Frodo was very, very tired and, uh, of the journey. And one day, he, he was just saying, talking to, uh, uh, what's that guy, the, the wizard, uh, Gandalf, is it? Uh? I, uh, huh? Gandalf, huh? okay. Uh, he, he said, I wish the ring had never come to me because he had gone through so much hardship. He says, I really wish the ring had not come to me. And this is what Gandalf replied to him. He says, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. And he says this, there are other forces at work in this world, Frodo, besides the will of evil. My point is this, the will of God is at work in these uncertain times. The will of God is at work even in the COVID-19. The will of God is at work even when economy collapses. The will of God is at work even when people have to go through hard times. There are forces, more than just the forces of evil at work. And that means the forces of God, the of good that comes from God. I hope we get that in. Because I, I sometimes am, 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 am a bit, uh, personally, I just, I just, I'm just the type. When people say this is from the devil, that is from the devil, the devil is attacking me, the attacker here, there, everywhere is the devil. As if only the forces of evil are at work in this world. Is that true? No. Yes. No. Who is stronger? Who is bigger? But yet, some people, out of fear, out of frustration, I do not know what's the reason. But everything is the devil, is the devil, is the devil. I think most of you have heard the joke, right? One day, the uh, pastor found the devil crying at the pulpit. Then he came and asked him, why are you crying? He said, everything your people also blame me. <laughs> the will of God is at work in these uncertain times. So are you living for God? The question is this. My brothers and sisters, and those of you who are watching online, are you... Are you living for God and trusting in His plans even in these uncertain times? Or are you only trusting and submitting to His plans when it matches up with yours, align, ah, this is what I want to do, and when all is well, then we live for God. The second thing besides continuing to trust God is to continue to glorify God. Say me, glorify God. Yeah, so just now, even uh, just we also said that to glorify Him. That's why Paul says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will be in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage. So in the prison, sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. That was his passion. He, he knows it is tough. And he embraces his weakness. That's why he says we'll have sufficient. He says, I, I hope, I expect, I eagerly expect. 
uh, Sharon, can I have the water? Yeah, just in case. Now, the word eagerly ex expect is in one word in Greek and it actually has the idea of watching something with the head turned away from other objects. That means focus. That means intentional. That means refusing to be distracted, but just focus onto the things that God wants him to do. Paul's attention was wholly occupied with one thing to the exclusion of others that Christ would be exalted in his body. He chose. He was intentional. He turned around and he doesn't want to look at all the other things. Today, can we turn around? We, we embrace the fears that the pandemic has brought. We embrace the, the, the uncertainties, the anxieties, the cause of concern. We are human, natural. But yet, in this time, there will be moments we choose and we decide that no matter what, yes, I'm going to this, but my life is still to glorify Jesus. My life is still to exalt Him. And I pray, I pray God will give me the courage because it's so easy to give up at this time and let fear rule us. But I choose, I choose not to allow fear and anxiety to control my life, my behaviour, my words, my actions, my thoughts. I choose not to. And this is what it means to continue to exalt God and glorify Him. This phrase, Christ will be exalted in my body, can literally be translated that Christ will be enlarged. Say me, enlarged. Or if the psalmist says, magnify in my body. So in, in certain ways, you and I, if we use a, a modern day metaphor, you and I are to be telescopes so that when people look to us and they see God, they see a magnified version of God. They don't, maybe without us, they will think that God is far away. Maybe without us, they will think that God is very small. But because of your actions, because of your faith, because of the continuing to trust Him and your desire to want to glorify Him, He sees in you a magnified Christ. Now we say telescope, I didn't say microscope. Microscope is to make things small look bigger. Telescope is to present what is already big and give you a true picture. So we are not microscopes, we are telescopes. Don't you never say you are a telescope for Jesus? I see many telescopes here and I hope, I pray, I'm one as well. That when you see me and my life can magnify God, can magnify and people see through the way that we live. And that must be our desire. I pray that will be our desire. If there's one thing that you, you, you don't know what you should be passionate for Jesus, for, uh, for Jesus, today I tell you, one thing that you must be passionate for Jesus is to glorify Him, is to magnify Him, is that to, to have that desire, that, that, and then that, be, that be our prayer, that whatever that we do, even it's a little thing, but when people see the way we respond to the pandemic, when people see the way we respond to the, to the real fears that are in our high lives, they, see, they, they can see the bigness, the greatness of God in our lives. Amen. We make known to our friends lots of things on social media, right? Best food. I love food. I always ask people, please tell me where is the best, this, best, that. It's okay, you can also... Send to me. Cannot get my number sent to Sharon. She'll let me know. Okay. Best food, latest gadgets, you know, now it's iPhone 12, you know. Uh, so, oh, Jerry will always post on his Facebook one. Uh, no, but this message is not for him, uh, actually, because he overcome already. Uh, popular movies, you no, know? Netflix top hits, you no, know? trending movies, sales and bargains, November 11, 11, now, now December 12, 12, come in, come on, oh, Black Friday, White Friday, Grey Friday, whatever. 
we are promoting and we tell our friends, hey, I got this chip here, I got this chip there. And some people say we are like birds, chip, chip, chip. Everything is cheap, right? So, I mean, it's fine. You're sharing something good. You know, praise the Lord. Go ahead with it. But the question is, are we making Christ known? Just as well. Do we make Christ known? Do, are we as excited? Are we as excited to share with fellow Christians what God is doing in my life? Are we as excited in sharing to pre-believers what God is doing in my life? Are we as convincing? Are we as passionate? Do we stop and take a snapshot of what God is doing in my life and quickly forward to them? Hey, see this. Look what God is doing in my life. That's why it's so important. That's why it's so important. I will tell the staff, something good news, they post in the staff group. I will say, please post in the leaders group. And sometimes I will just say, I tell uh, Christina, please broadcast it. This is good news. Make it known. By making known some of these good things that are happening in the church and in Christian lives, we are making Christ known. That's the whole point of it. We are not glorifying the church. We are not glorifying an individual. We are glorifying Christ who is at work in such instances. Are we exalting or magnifying Him? Are we making Him viral? God grant us that grace that we will be used by God to make Him viral in the internet. Amen? Charles Ellicott says, my body, I love his phrase, my body will be the theatre. My body will be the theatre, will be the cinema, will be the big screen in which Christ's glory is displayed. My body, your body, big screens. How many, how big now are the TV screens? I don't know. How, how many? 100 something inches. Huh? Yeah. So we are all 100 something inches big screen for Jesus Christ, you know. We are not the tiny, tiny, small handphone one. The eye also have to look. People look at us. Huh? They must squint their eye to see Jesus in you. Got Jesus, man. So I'm just being naughty. Huh? I know it is, I'm not talking about you all. All right. No, to those online, other people maybe, yeah. <laughs> the world judges Christ. These are speakers' favorite, uh, yeah, defensive words. Uh. The world judges Christ by his followers. When a Christian goes to a trial, everybody watches and it shows what our life really is. We need to get that in us. What does your life shout? When you go through trials and uncertainties in times like this, what does it speak to everybody who watches? Is it fear or faith? Is it confidence or anxiety? Does it declare my way, my comfort, my dreams? Or does it speak Christ, the gospel and the glory of God? That is what it means to continue to glorify God in uncertain times and to live for Him. William Carey, we know one of the greatest missionary, people call him the father of missions, great work in India. And when he was dying, his friend Mr. Dove came and was talking to him. And before he left, he told this man, he said, Mr. Dove, you have been speaking about Dr. Carey, Dr. Carey. When I'm gone, say nothing about Dr. Carey. Speak about Dr. Carey's saviour. He has, he has everything. Uh, he has the right perspective. He has it. And that, that is what it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about any individual. It is about our Saviour. It is about our Lord. It is about our Jesus Christ. That's all. So those of you, you are doing well and, and people are giving you praises, praise the Lord. And people are, are, are encouraged, inspired by your life of faith, praise the Lord. But remember to always push it back to the Lord Jesus Christ in your own way. You know, uh, there's, how many of you know Toto? There's this song, Africa. Nobody there, there to put because you'll be as, as young as me. All right? yeah. So there's this song, it's a, it's a top hymn. So the younger one, please go and Google and hear this song. Then you know where your pastor is coming from. I'm not asking you to follow Toto. just want you to understand me. Okay, anyway, this song was quite top hip like, before. And, and, and I, I want to show you something. They, they did something uh, uh, in, in a desert in Africa. So uh, can we have the video? Yeah. 
Toto's Africa is going to bless the rains for the rest of time. Artist has created a sound installation that's going to be playing the 1980 hit, uh, 1982 hit on a loop forever. The art piece uses speakers and an MP3 player powered by solar batteries to play the song on a continuous loop. The installation is located in the desert in Namibia. This is not an advertisement. Huh? Right now, even at this moment, this set of SIP speakers are in the Namibian desert. Right now, playing this song 24-7 for don't know how many years already. And they are playing and they are playing and he's inspired by this, this artist, a Namibian artist was inspired. He loves the song, he loves his country. So we say, why not? So he has installed some gadgets there and, and, and the, the speakers are powered uh, by solar energy and they will be playing, playing, playing. And he will probably just once in a while go there and do some maintenance work on the battery. But he will be playing. And his whole idea is that he just wants he just wants these songs to be bled out to the deserts. And if anyone comes across to, to, to hear, he felt it was a glorious song for his country. To me, I, 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 I look at that and I, 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 I pray, I pray that you and I will be speakers for the Lord. You and I will be 24 7 speakers for the Lord. Our lives, our lives will be just like the speakers. And, and our lives will be blaring out the song of Jesus Christ. The song of Jesus Christ through all eternity. As long as we live, as long as we live, Christians, as long as they are Christians in this world, before Jesus comes, our lives will be, will be a song unto the Lord, blaring out into the desert, which is this world. A desert that is dry, that, that doesn't have an answer to what they are going through. But we have, and, and, and may we glorify God in that way. So I pray that we, every one of us, we are the minute leader speakers. But when we put together, we produce quite a credible sound, I tell you, when we are together and glorify the Lord together. The third thing is we need to continue to build people. Not just to glorify God, but to build people. Say me, build people. And that's one of our vision statements. Alright, uh, I understand. I, I was a bit surprised that some people that I thought should know the vision statement of the church uh, didn't know actually. Do you all know the vision statement of this church? Okay, then never mind. We need to put up your hand. We only have three statements. Huh? If you come down the leaf, you, 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 you come in the, the what? You come in on the leaf lobby, ground floor level one, you see a poster there. Only six words. Love God. Say me, love God. Love. love God. Build people. Share Christ. Let's go over again huh, so you don't say you don't know the statement of this church and where we are going, okay? This is everything we do, everything this, we live brief is towards this direction, towards building a community towards this direction. Everything we do, we want to stay focused. We may have many methods to do things and we may even argue and have conflicts about what we do. But at the end of the day, our yardstick, our yardstick is to move into this direction. Okay, our, our way of making decisions is always move into this vision statement. Okay, one, two, three, love God. Build people, share Christ. One more time, love God. Build people, share Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's all we want to do. And that's what we believe God has called us to do as His people. Until He comes, this is what we do. There are many other little things that we do, but these are the main things. These are the direction. This is why, I always say, this is why I believe with my heart. This is why Jesus still leaves us behind after we get saved. Otherwise, we get saved, we could have just gone home already. Why waste our time here? More risky, right? For all you know, suddenly some backslide here. How can you say like that? Okay, I'm just a bit colloquial here. No, we won't backslide. God is at work in our lives. But we have to build people. And, and, and I want to take this to, again, re-emphasize this point. All of us are here to build people. This is what Paul's passion is. Even though he is in prison, 
Even though he's facing uncertainty, even as he look at his own life, he will have a lot of fear and anxiety as a person. But he knew, and when he communicates to people, he is reminding himself and to them, this is what he intends to do, and he will intend to do as long as he can. He says, if I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. Can someone say that about us? That when they are with us, the joy in Christ is overflowing on account of us, on account of me. Can people's life be inspired? That is why one of our values is inspiring worship services. We want you to have an experience here that on account of us, that your joy in Christ will overflow. We want to work and pray and, and, and move towards that. And this is our prayer, this is our this is what we believe is our identity. This is what we are supposed to be. And it's not just corporately as a church, individually where we go. And so we are to build people. We are not here to tear down people, condemn people and put them so low that they cannot put, bring themselves up again. Yes, we must correct people. Yes, we must discipline people. But let it all be done with love and wisdom. We are not preaching an easy gospel here. We are accountable to one another. We believe in iron sharpens iron. But yet love must be in the picture. Right motives must be in the picture. If ever I correct you, it is because I want to build you, not because I want to tear you down. There is a lot of difference. It's not because I'm angry or just because you are doing something that puts shame to me. No. My, my main motive has to be build you, to build you up. And not just in the terms of, of correction. I, we must pray and try and try to be an encourager. How many of us, we are, we are we have friends who are encouragers and, and we always feel good. The encouragers make easy friends and, and, and we love that. We love them. Those people who are encouraging comes to you, always say something that they feel can encourage you. You will be drawn to them. And I think it is not just about people liking us. It is about our calling, about destiny, about what we should still continue to do and in these uncertain times. Why? Because in these uncertain times, it's so, so easy, so easy to just be focused on ourselves and our own struggles. And we forgot that we have a responsibility to build other people up. We are just so caught up in trying to put the pieces together for our lives. And we understand that. All of us are going through that. All of us have our battles to fight. But that doesn't mean we forget that we have a responsibility as well and a heart as well that God has put certain people in our life and that we are to build them, we are to encourage them in the Lord. Can you hear amen from God's people? I know you are smiling behind the mask. And agreeing, but because all the masks, I, I don't know, like look very serious, all some black color masks are scary. So <laughs> while Paul considered the richness of going to be with Christ and how he was far better, so he wasn't fearful of death in prison, but he still felt compelled to stay and be with the Philippians for their spiritual progress. Now, progress is a military term that speaks of a pioneer advance, a new advance, a Greek military term referring to the army engineers who go before the troops to open the way into new territory. Maybe they do recce, maybe they build bridges. They are doing that. They are the first one. New territory. And Paul wanted the church of Philippi to spiritually advance in areas that they had never been before. So it's not just only providing, supporting, uh, encouragement. His vision uh, for the people is they not remain where they are. And, and this is also our vision as a church, 
that we ought to have for one another, not to remain where we are. We hope for everyone to continue to grow and develop in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not my wish that after 10 years, 20 years, you are with Church of Praise, you remain where you are. It is my wish that you all are progressing in your faith. That after 10 years in Church of Praise, you have reached a different level. After 20 years, you have reached a different level. This is what we hope to accomplish in your life by the grace of God. This is why we are here. We are not here just to do maintenance work. We are not here just to draw people into the church and let them remain where they are. We are here to challenge you personally, whether through the cell groups or through ministries or through the message like this. We are here to challenge you to rise up. Say me, rise up. Some of you need to rise up. The, the time, the time like what, what Jasmine reminded about the speaker yesterday, that the, the, the time for the comfort zone thing is over. It is time. Today, perhaps this word is just to remind some of you. No more comfort zone. It's time to rise up and develop and grow. You are no longer to be staying where you are. By the grace of God, as the Lord speaks to your heart, the area that you are doing, yes, you may be doing this, but now God is telling you to do more. And you do. You don't be afraid if the, the Lord speaks to your heart. So, so, of course, this you have to be prayerful. I'm a person who always will be prayerful. I have a lot of ideas and sometimes I'm quite afraid of my ideas. I have to pray first and I ask people, please, please pray along with me because think of ideas is very easy. The staff will say, Pastor, you only say idea, but we have to do the work. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. was well, it very loud already? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> but we must progress. I don't, I don't expect Church of Praise after 10 years, 20 years, 30, we are just still like that. Happy where we are. No, no, no. We are to progress. We want people to progress in their spiritual life. And you are to help people in your life, in your circle. Whether you are parents with your children, to help them progress. Now, of course, we are not talking about, you know, uh, uh, express class. Uh. You know, suddenly, whoa, become the people that you are trying to build. But, you must be moving and planting seeds in their life. Sometimes you'll be very far, sometimes you'll be very long, but it's fine. The main thing is that you, as a believer in Christ, you are concerned about the spiritual life of those around you and you're praying and you're doing your part to build them in that sense. Paul says, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. This he told Timothy, and uh, in this verse, we actually see that there were four generations of Christians Paul was referring to. Paul teaching Timothy, Timothy teaching other men, other men teaching others. So four generations. So in a sense, it is about legacy. Christianity is about leaving a legacy. It's not just me receiving it and then I stop here and then I receive, I enjoy and that's all. I do my part. No. It is about finding people that we can pass the legacy on and challenging them and encouraging them and praying for them and empowering them. And that is what it's all about. To live for Christ is to continually be a disciple who disciples others so one day they can do the same. So I, I pray, I pray, I, I know that there are many of you who are already on this track, but there are some of you, this is probably something that you have not really seriously uh, considered and I want to challenge you that this is a calling God has on your life and even in these uncertain times uh, this is no reason for those who are already doing number one for no reason no reason for you to stop discipling and encouraging people okay you you can do it online you can do it through whatsapp but you are still we are we are we are physically maybe at a distance but socially we are still connected and so we are to do that. And for those of you who have not yet even started on this journey and you think for some reason that you may be too old or too young, uh, there's no excuse. You start to rise up and start by, start with one. Start with one. I always say start with one. You don't, don't have to, don't have to like want to save the whole, uh, um, uh, uh, whole world. Start with one that God has placed in your life. 
and, and invest something into this person's life and encourage this person either to come to church and get in a Bible study or go to a cell group and get them involved in activities that can, God can use to build their spiritual life. Start with one. So are you willing to be available to others, to encourage them, to share life experiences with them and to help them spiritually progress? So I'm not talking about all of us have to go to Bible school and then be a Bible school teacher or, or can teach the Bible like, like, like some of the pastors. Then only you disciple people. No. None of, the, none of the disciples of Jesus Christ went to Bible school, though they have their own tradition in, 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 in uh, religious studies, but it was totally, the theology was totally uh, uh, in contradiction. And so they were all just going by faith as well, with a passion for Christ, and just doing life together. Say me, do life together. Do life together with somebody that in, in the process of doing life, you are imparting something, some values to them. Research actually points, and I'm talking to some of you who are older ones, and I'm, I'm, I'm specifically zooming the application to some of you uh, you don't like to be called uncles, aunties, uh, but you're behaving like uncles, aunties. Maybe not in this church, other people's church. I don't know. Yeah, but I want to challenge all of you uh, that you have a role to play in the lives of the young people in this church. Don't look at the young people and say, ah, this is Tzu Yang's job. Lah. This is Christina's job. Lah. This is Anthony's job. Lah. This is Pastor's job. Lah. No, uh, it's our everybody's job. Uh, it is you have with you, in you, inherently the power to influence the new generation for God. Instead of just saying, our millennials are like that. Lah. They, they are the one who expect everything. I, I can't remember the word, the what, the few, uh, entitled generation. Uh, they always use that word and then, you know, then stay far, have all kinds of concepts. I don't know. I know I'm not talking to you. You are okay. You all love the young people. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I want to highlight uh, the importance. You, you are reaching out to young people. I want to tell you your labor will not be in vain. You are connecting with them. You know, uh, research actually, uh, a recent research by Bana uh, called Faith for Exile found that young people who grew up in the church and are still committed to core Christians' beliefs and practices are far, far more likely to have three things in common. Three things in common, all right? These, these young people. And what are they? Number one is they have meaningful relationships with not young people but adults. Say me, adults. The young people who have meaningful relationships with adults in the church, they are the ones who are still connected when they grow up. 77% of them. The second group is the one, not just only they have feeling relationship, they are connected to those older than them. And of course, those who come from a Christian family, they admire the faith of their parents. So parents, take note. You need to live your life, your faith, live it out until the point that you can inspire your children. You are living a legacy. So you have, I, I'm sorry if you feel that I'm loading this on you, but research does say that way, that you have a very, very important, so I encourage you, I, I'm so happy for the parents that you are here today and you are here every week attending service. I challenge you to continue to do that. Even there are times you may feel you don't want to be here. Even there are times you don't know what Pastor Michael is saying and you have to pray for perseverance through the service. Uh, please come. By you coming, you are inspiring at least your children. And they know that this is the value of my parents. They are living out they are faith. They are not just talking about it. They are living it out. They are living it out. And that is important. That's why we need to live for Christ. So who is or can be your Timothy today? And uh, in conclusion, all right, in conclusion, so I, I say in uncertain times, we need to continue to trust God. We need to continue to glorify God. And the third thing, we need to continue to build people. Three things. Three things that we need to do. And the key, the common word is continue. Continue. 
Because in a season like this, it's so easy to just give up, to just uh, take five and just, oh, I got all these things I need to do. God, you just wait. I, 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 all these things I know, I know, I know that I have to do this. But this is not the season. COVID-19 is the season. And I need, to, I need to bring food to the table. I need to do this. I need to do that. So many things. And so as far as, as living for God, uh, hold on first. But no. Did Paul hold on when he went to prison? Did he say, God, I'm in no mood. Lah. I'm now in prison. Don't ask me to serve you anymore. I need, I, need, I, need, I need some space alone. I need to heal. I need to, I need to, I need to really think about things. Don't ask me to do any more things. No, he continued. And so in conclusion, let me just share this verse, one last verse to encourage you. Paul, he wrote to the Corinthians, he says, So my dear brothers and sisters, stand strong. Say me, stand strong. Stand strong. These are my words for you. Stand strong. Do not let anything change you, including COVID-19, including this pandemic. Don't let this pandemic change you. Change your calling. Change what you believe God wants you to do. We must never allow that. We can adapt our ways to live our life. It is a new norm. But our calling is never a new norm. Our calling is always the same. So we don't let anything change us, our calling, our identity, our purpose in God. We always give ourselves fully, say me fully, not 50%, not 70%, not 80%. We give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your work in the Lord is never wasted. Amen. Your faith will not be wasted. Your effort to glorify God will not be wasted. Your, your diligence in trying to encourage people and build people for the Lord and challenge them to live for the Lord will not be wasted. Take that in, brothers and sisters. Continue. Continue. Persistence will be rewarded. Top duty 40, right? Do you know what does WD-40 stands for? Anyone knows? What does WD-40 know? You know, I don't say, I say, huh? because I'm the preacher. <laughs> Only one person knows WD. Now, let me show off Sikit, huh? but not to glorify myself, huh? just to have fun a bit. Huh? Okay. WD stands for water displacement. Huh? So it is, it is in the kind, it, it, it prevents rust, so it stops water from staying where it is. And then do you know what 40 means, you know? 40 actually means the number of times the company tried before developing an effective for formula. In other words, 39 times they failed this formula. They couldn't produce what they want to produce. Only the 40 times, then they were able to produce this product that can really meet the needs. And so they, they realized that it's important for them to remind themselves that they did it 40 times. Baru success. Only successful. Hallelujah. Perseverance. Perseverance. I pray we are top duty 40. Say me, we are top duty 40s. And maybe 400, maybe 4,000. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how long, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. You know, uh, let me close with this uh, uh, so called testimony. Huh? Today a bit long, huh? 5.27. Saturday crowd and the online crowd is always the like, so-called guinea pig. After today, I will shorten my sermon for tomorrow. <laughs> so you can come Sunday. You want shorter sermons, you try to come on Sunday. Huh? You surely like you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, I was thinking about this uh, persistence and I was thinking about when the COVID-19, in a certain times, when the COVID-19 hit us and we were really, we were really lost. Actually, we were never prepared. We, we never really did online service. And, and we only had live stream and some of those live streams is really not, not up to par. I, I wonder why we still have people viewing, actually. Uh, but we just did it. We were just testing it. And uh, when it hit, we actually did not know what to do. 
Uh, but thank God uh, the team uh, rise up to the occasion. And, and let me share a bit, just have an idea how this uh, moving into the online services and into digitalization of the church ministries uh, uh, open our eyes and, and also, in a way, uh, God has rewarded our effort because we actually, uh, Sharon's favorite phrase, uh, blur, blur. We actually blur, blur. We just went in. But we keep going. We keep going every week. We have, uh, because we, it's something new. So our staff, every week we have evaluation, evaluation, evaluation. And, and this cannot do that. That cannot do this. And we were, we were just pushing because we know that the work of God cannot stop. Even though we don't have physical service, we still want the ministry going on. We still want to trust that God is at work in our lives. God is strengthening us. We still want to trust that we can still glorify God even we cannot come to church physically. We still want to believe that we can continue to bless all of you and, and the people of God. And so this is what happens in YouTube. We have two channels. One is YouTube, one is Facebook, where every week um, in March 18, when we had to revert back to the online service and totally online service, and so we started. Now, just to let you have an idea uh, of the situation, one year ago, when we didn't go on this online service, when we did live streaming, we, our live streaming garnered about 50 views every service about that. And then, after March, and we got in, and this is the first service that we did, COVID-19 and the Christian response, and now we have 741 views. 741 people view this sermon. It's a 13 times increase, beyond what we think. Used to be 50 people, but now 700 over people has watched this video. Now, that is YouTube. Uh, Facebook, what about Facebook? Now, Facebook live, Facebook live stream, we get about 245 views for that same service, for that same service about one year ago, before, before pre-COVID-19, before we had to push ourselves to go on this online thing. And now, after one year, this same sermon in Facebook have 2.6 thousand views. Can you imagine? So, from 255 to 2.6 is 25 times increase. So, in total, we have, all, um, we have from 300 weekly online engagement, now we have 3,000 plus online engagement. And, and the key is that because the team decide to be steadfast, because the team, the staff team decide, and, and, and some of the other people decide not to give up, Decide to continue what we want to do. Decide not to cave in to fear. Decide to know our calling, to, to love God, to build people, to share Christ. This cannot change. And decide that we will continue this excellent spirit to improve. And so every day we are improving and we are trying and doing everything. And this is because we didn't give up. And I especially want to thank at this time uh, two particular individuals. Of course, there's a big team behind them. But two particular individuals, I think we will not be able to come this far with the online service. And these two individuals is Jerry and Rachel. Where is Jerry and Rachel? I can wave your hand. Where is Rachel? Rachel, ah, Rachel there behind. All covered face. Son, uh, uh. But, but they, they did a lot of work behind. And, and they came in at the right time. I'm so thankful. And of course, they have a team behind. And the worship team as well. They have to adapt and we have to come uh, and, and, and play. And, and just very thankful. And because why? Because we believe that this cannot stop. We believe sharing Christ cannot stop. We believe building people cannot stop. We have to keep doing it. And God rewarded persistent. Open our eyes. To, to, to bigger things. We never realized that now we can minister up to 3,000 people. And then we believe that the numbers will go bigger because this is on demand. And this is the trend now. People are watching service on demand. Just like grab food, lah, huh? grab, you, you order your taxi also on demand, your food also on demand. 
this is a culture now. We are not here to try to pontificate about the goodness or badness about such culture, but this is the culture. And people who can adapt quickly, and we pray that as a church we can adapt. And we not only adapt, we want to innovate. In this season of uncertainty, we do not deny. We don't say, ah, this, this will flow over, lah. then next time you, everything will be back to normal. We do not deny that some things will never be back to normal. We do not deny that it is going to be very hard to do ministry now. We do not deny it. We want to face it. Face on. We do not revert. We don't talk about past. Ayo, how nice. Uh, how nice no COVID-19. Uh, our church uh, always got physical service. Uh, how nice. How nice. We don't revert back to the past. We don't going to live in the past. This is the present. This is the future. COVID-19 has come. And even if it's gone, it has, it has like an impact on us. And there are some things that we need to change. We do not resign. We do not give up. Say, ayah, die lah, die lah. Go to other church lah. Go and watch other people online service lah. Why so hard? Work so hard. Ah, okay lah, okay lah. All the stuff. You all can go and find other work to do lah. No. We persist. Then we say we adapt. We innovate. We even be creative in how to do better. And we stay. We seek to be steadfastly agile in this season. And this is what it's all about. Living for Christ in uncertain times. So, uh, I remember John Stott. Uh, someone visited him and his dying wish. He says, pray. Someone, his friend asked, what would you like me to pray for you? Three weeks before he died, he says that, pray that I will be faithful to Jesus until my last breath. And I pray, I pray that you, if you have to pray for me, pray that I will be faithful to Jesus until my last breath. And I will be praying the same prayer for you as well, that you will be faithful to Jesus until your last breath. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand, even as we close in prayer and as I invite the team, and we're going to partake of the communion together. And even those who are, are watching online, uh, please get ready your emblems and let's have a word of prayer. Father, I just thank you for your word today. Thank you for what you are doing in our life. Thank you for your word today. Lord, we, we thank you that your word gives us clarity, direction, what to do. Even in these uncertain times, your commands are clear. Your commands are clear. And Lord, we pray, just as Paul prayed and wishes, that you grant us the courage, grant us the courage to continue to trust you, grant us the courage to continue to glorify you, grant us the courage to continue to build the lives of the people who are, we have put into our lives and we will get whom we can speak into and influence. Thank you, Abba, Father. Bless the preaching of your word. Lord, I pray you bring much grace into the lives of my brothers and sisters here. Lord, that they will increase in their faith. They will look to you. They will decide that whatever that happens, they will decide that you are behind the scene. You are still working out the, piece, the, 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 the big picture. And though, that, though at times we cannot even see you or feel you, but we will choose to believe that you are still at work, O oh God, working out your plans and purposes for our lives, for your glory. Lord, just commit all of us to your loving hands. May we continue to be faithful and we want to thank you by faith, O oh Lord. We want to thank you by faith as we continue to be faithful in our, what you have called us to do, to trust you, to glorify you and to build the lives of people, we will reap a reward in the due time. We will see the fruits of our labour in due time. Our labour, indeed, Lord, for you will never, never be in vain. No matter how big, no matter how small, our labour in you will not be in vain. Our two fishes, our five loaves will be multiplied by you to bless the many. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. Amen. I'd like to now invite the, the, the leaders who are serving to come to the front. And uh, I'd like the, um, the worship team to lead us with a song that I feel is appropriate in closing. And as we prepare for communion, those of you feel that you need to take a seat, feel free to take a seat. Uh, and those of you who would like to stand and worship, feel free. But we just want to be prepare our hearts. We just want to prepare our hearts and be prayerful and be reflective on the Lord during this time. Amen. Amen. Worship you. What is your very song we could ever sing? What is of all the praise we could ever bring? What is Jesus, the name above every other. 
1 Corinthians 11, 23-26 Paul wrote these words For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you And the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed He took bread and when he had given thanks He broke it and he said This is my body which is for you And you do this in remembrance of me And in the same way after supper Christ took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood and you drink it, you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Let's pray before we partake of the emblems. Lord, we thank you for this precious time of reverent reflection on all that Christ did for us at Calvary. As we partake of these emblems at this Holy Communion table, we humbly take this bread and bless it and eat it in remembrance of you. For your own body was broken for us. May we continue to lean on you in our hearts by faith and with grateful thanks from this day and all days forward, may we walk worthy of our calling in Christ Jesus and live a life that is honouring you. And Lord, may we also come to you today in grateful remembrance of what the Lord Jesus Christ achieved on Calvary's cross for all of us when he shed his precious blood on the cross to pay the price of our sin and became a ransom for many. We share this cup of blessing in Jesus' name, remembering how he himself took the cup in the upper room as the hour of his crucifixion drew near. And he said, This is my blood which is shed for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord, for this holy sacrament. And may we never approach the communion table in an unworthy manner, knowing that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until His second coming again in great glory and majesty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's partake of the bread together. Let's drink the cup together. Amen. Say a word of thanks to the Lord in your heart. And once again, thank you for your time, patience in hearing the word of God and celebrating together with us the communion and also those of you online. We hope to see you next week. Before we close, let me just release this word of blessing upon you taken from Romans 15, 5 to 6 and it says, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Thank you.